How's it going, guys? This is Forensic Forks Deontay, and I'm back with another video. This is episode 26 to the Asian Session Library. Once again, tonight, because it's still Wednesday night, Wednesday, the 17th, January 2024, the pair US dollar versus Japanese yen provided another successful Asian Session model made by your boy Deontay. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity. Now, in tonight's example, we can see that we don't have any swing lows, but we do take the lowest low that forms at 815. That's the low I would take. So that's the only exception. I said this in previous episodes as well. If you don't have any swing highs, you can also still mark out the highest high for the New York lunch session or vice versa. You take out the lowest low of the New York lunch session. So it would be here. We mark that out. We're going to be utilizing a purge and revert technique, a turtle soups technique. That's all it is. We're going to look at the opening price because we love the opening price. Why do we love the opening price, folks? Because it tells us without any indicators where overbought and oversold conditions are, and it allows us to be whether buyer or whether seller. We need to take a stance. And when I know price is below the opening price, I'm taking the stance of being a buyer. And when price is above the opening price, I'm taking the stance of being a seller. Now, as price trades forward, we can see it comes out and takes out that lowest low we form mm -hmm. at 815. Because this is the 15 minute time frame. That's a 815 low. That's a rated. We go down to the one minute time frame. What are we looking for? We're looking for that entry technique to form below Asian session open. Because that's discount. We want to buy cheap. So let's just mark this out real quick. So we got this discount. I mean, out up here, which is going to be premium. This is really crucial to a lot of day traders or even scalpers model. I think they don't implement this enough and they don't mark this out to show themselves where they are around the open of the session or the open of the day. We're looking for that entry technique. Now, many people will say, there it is, right? Outright, they'll say, that's it right there because price took out a swing low and then price came up and took out a swing high. There's the first fair value gap that forms. Let's take it. And my old entry technique, that was the entry. If you go back to episode one, episode two, episode three, I was taking this, but I found that taking this first fair value gap that forms after purging that sell side liquidity or that low, it sometimes could lead to drawdown and even a result of a failed trade. So I didn't prefer that. Someone brought it to my attention that, yo, maybe you should consider taking the swing high broken or the swing low broken by a fair value gap. And I started to study that and I saw that it was much more consistent for an entry. Now, that's not to say at times that this entry technique here does not provide a great dynamic response or does not provide a successful trade model because it does at times. I don't disagree with that, with people saying that I personally am taking the choice the my personal right as a trader to take the entry technique that I want. And it's not that one. Let me show you exactly the one I'm looking for. So let's play, play it through. See, look, it's all in the premium now, right? I'm not doing anything. I'm still waiting. The entry cannot form up here if I'm going to be a buyer after taking out that low. I can't be buying up here. It's unrealistic. If it, if anything, I should be selling up here. But since I'm still following the model in my steps, I should still be waiting for a certain technique to form. So we're going to play it out. Nothing yet, right? Nothing. There's nothing yet. We're waiting. You got to stalk the trade. There it is. There it is. There goes the entry technique right here. Fair value gap. Zoom in on it. Zoom in. Look at how it looks. This is not just ran a random fair value gap that I took. This is a fair value gap that breaks a swing high. What does Deontay normally do at this point? Nothing has changed. One-to-one -one scenario. What are we looking for? 15 pips to the downside. Right. And in this trade, I always tell people, if, whatever your risk parameter it is, you're risking 1% per trade. Whether that's 2%, it all depends on your risk appetite. I can't control that for you, and I can't make that decision for you. 
most likely whoever's watching this video is of age. You're a grown adult. You're definitely intelligent. I know all my viewers and subscribers and supporters that are in the Telegram channel that follow me on TradingView, that follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, follow me on you know, any other platform, I know you guys are definitely capable of formulating a risk management model for yourself with the Asian session model. Here we go. Price trades into it. Now you're long. And as we can see, now we're going to play it through for the video sake. We got 10 pips. We got 15. And this is on a Wednesday. This is on a Wednesday. So we got 15 pips and let's just play it out through to where we are currently in price. So play it all the way through. And this is where we are. So we were able to bag 10 pips minimalistically. And then we were able to get 15, the ideal realistic TP that we were looking for. But notice where the entry technique is forming. Look at the steps. Follow me again. We mark off the swing lows and the swing highs. If we don't have a swing high or we don't have a swing low, we're going to take the highest high or lowest low. There goes the lowest low that forms at 815. That 815 candle is rated. After that, shortly, we can see that a fair value gap that breaks the swing high forms. That's the entry. You go long. You're risking 1%, 2%, 3%. Now, I'm not here going to try and gauge your equity and how many times you should be managing, you know, when you should go 1%, when you should go 2%. If I had to break it down to somebody that had no trading experience, on nothing, I would tell them risk 1% or risk half a percent. And as time goes on, as you compound slowly, right, and the winning trades go on, let's say you do take a loser because it's inevitable. As traders, you are going to run into losing trades. When you take that loser, you need to cut risk in half or even by a full percent. And once you're able to mitigate those losers, then you can start applying the same risk management that you normally have. You have to have a protocol. If you take a loss, reduce the risk. If you are winning constantly, you can also be proactive and lower the risk. Let's say I'm going into this Asian session tonight and I'm already up 6% compound for the month, right? For January. And I've been on a hot streak. All my trades have been winners. I have four winning trades, six winning trades, whatever the case may be. But for some reason, I tell myself, hey, you know what? I should lower my risk because I'm just on a hot streak and I know the market is going to humble me and I need to be prepared for that. What do I do? I trade for a half percent this for this model or for this trade idea, this opportunity here. Instead of going full percent, whatever it is, one, two or three, I cut it so that if it is a losing trade, at least I was like, yeah, I caught the loser and I mitigated the loser because I was anticipating, OK, sooner or later down the road, down this yellow brick road. Right. It's not all golden and sunshine and rainbows because you're going to have those days when the market humbles you. and if you want to be prepared for that, you have a feeling that you've been on a hot streak and this next trade may be the trade that makes you really fall into bad habits or makes you revenge trade or makes you do things outside of your risk parameters in your trading model, reduce the risk. So you don't even have to fall into that bad habit. You're not triggered into it. There's no cues into doing those things bad. And that will help you succeed further in your trading career. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's not, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. You want to stretch your equity as long as possible. Let's say you have a prop account. Let's say you have a live account, whatever it is. You're going to now try to take the equity that you have, right? Whether you funded it yourself or you got it funded through a prop firm. You're trying to spread that equity out as long as possible and trade take as much trades as possible with the equity. Someone that is risking 3% per trade is going to burn cash much more faster than somebody that is risking 1% per trade, slowly compounding it and reducing the risk when they take a loser and then stacking back on the 1% once they regain the losses. That person is going to have longevity. Remember, you're the tortoise, not the hare. You don't want to be the rabbit. You don't want to be Buzz Bunny. You want to be someone that's going to take your time. You're, the, you're going to be taking your time through the race. It's not who gets there first, who gets the million dollars first. You will get there over time and you will sustain longevity and in the process of that, you're going to build what? Great trading discipline. You're going to get you're going to build in lots of experience in market conditions that other people are going to get furiated in. Other people are going to get upset and blow up and want to punch a screen through their, you know, their 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 computer or throw their phone or something or throw a fit. 
and it causes a lot of trickling effects into their life. However, you're not going to go that way because you're going to be more prepared because you've consistently seen examples like this. You know that the model does work and you know that the model will present some reasonable results. Now, at times it does perform outstanding, you know, and it gives you over 15, over 30, over 40, over 60, over 100 pips at times. But you need to be consistent to see that. You don't see that if you keep changing your model every single time. You don't see that if you keep changing your entry technique every single time. This is why I'm very specific to the way I'm showing this to the community. I don't want to be inconsistent in what I'm showing you. I don't want it to be like Deontay showing us this entry technique this day. And then the next week, he's showing us a different entry technique this day. No, I want to show you how just picking one entry technique and running with it can still provide consistent results. I'm trying to be as simplistic as possible when it comes to trading. Trading in itself is hard. And I know I'm rambling at this point now. Most people would have clicked off already. Yeah, you're talking too much. But it's real game here. The industry is full of buds bunnies. A lot of people that are rabbits or hares that just want to sprint. They just want to sprint. All the scalpers, they just want to sprint. Now, this is my methodology and my ideology and belief. Swing traders and position traders tend to be the best suited traders. Yes, there is still risk involved no matter what type of style of trading you're taking. But those traders tend to have better risk management because they have to risk less because they're entering on the higher time frames. Secondly, they have to have a heftier stop loss. So the, the, the lot size that they're using is definitely going to be a lot smaller than what a day trader or a scalper is going to be using. And they're going to hold that for 20 days. They're going to hold that for three weeks. They're going to hold that for three months, six months, or even a full year. And then you'll see how these people are able to compound accounts in a much healthier manner than those that are just sprinting to the finish line and trying to be others to send screenshots to the Telegram channel or to post on Twitter to show how much money they made in a day trade. It's all good. But at the end of the day, you want to pay your bills. You want to be able to provide shelter for you and your family. You want to provide a lifestyle to yourself where you can breathe a bit, you know, and you can beat inflation. That's the whole point. We already live in a world where money is the only way we kind of increase our quality of life. And technically, and I'm putting this in quotations, get back time. Because we know time is a made up concept. And the concept is money is time. And we trade our lifespans for money. In order to get that back, we have to accumulate a lot of wealth. Now, some people are lucky and they accumulate it really fast over other people, whether that is through inheritance, whether that is through you know a will, whether that is through insurance, whatever it is, those people may have that circumstance and that point at the time, you know, because the cards lined up for them that way. But for most people, it doesn't line up that way. Everybody's not a lottery winner. Everybody has to work hard to get there. And you got to work smart. It's one thing to have a model, but then to totally disregard the rules. Stay consistent. Peace.